Hey guys, RC here, back with another edition of Let's Play Out of the Park 18. This is our career Let's Play with Kansas City. Uh, last video we started having a, a little slumping issue. K Chicago has uh, gotten really hot and we have uh, cooled off simultaneously. Uh, luckily we still have a two and a half game lead uh, in the wild card. The scary part is it's now Oakland starting to breathe up on our neck instead of guys from the AL East. I guess it doesn't really matter, but uh, what we have done is uh, last video we uh, sent Jack Morris down. Uh, he's really struggled this year, especially in a, a couple of recent outings. And then before that, uh, I think he only had like two innings in three, three or four weeks. So... He's still young enough. I, he's still developing, so I sent him down to AAA in hopes that he could pitch regularly in the starting rotation and uh, get back up sooner rather than later. Um, the game wanted to put Steve Busby into the uh, rotation and knock Paul Splitorf down. Uh, Splitorf's 9-3. and three. I don't think I want to do that while Busby has a 707 ERA. Um... McClure is going to be the next one to go if he does. If I don't start seeing some uh, response from him, now granted he's only thrown three innings, but you know he is uh, he is in the bullpen there. Um, it's odd how you know the game only uses certain guys, you know, and I guess that's just due to the time frame in the in the 70s with the with the settings and whatnot. Uh, anyway. Um, Let's see. Actually, uh, we we've been trending up here in uh, in capacity and attendance. We're now up over twenty nine four. So maybe that'll be a trend. I don't know. You know, we really need to keep winning. Uh, but the fact that we're in the wild card hunt, uh, I think, is going to help us immensely. So let's go ahead and knock out another week. Uh, actually, you know what, before we do that, um, anybody remember who we've covered and who we haven't? Um, I know we've covered some of these guys. Did we cover Cincinnati, the big red machine? Pretty sure. I know we were covering some guys on this side. I ought to make a list of that, I guess. <laughs> I know we did the Expos, I think we did the Cubs, because I seem to recall somebody thanking me for doing the Expos. Um, pretty sure I did the Pirates, because there's a bunch of guys on the Pirates that I liked. Did we do the Yankees? I don't remember doing the Yankees, so let's do the Yankees. Uh, if we did them already, I apologize. Uh, in advance, but uh, let's take a look. So Roy White is out for the year. Um, Davey Lopes is out for two days on the current injury list. If we take a look at the rotation, let's take a look at that first. Uh, well, wrong team. Well, standings? Yankees. There we go. Alright, so to look at anything down here, I've got to look up here. So all right, so let's see. Our top prospects here, Roger Erickson. He's down in, he's he's actually in the majors at 20 years old. Larry Littleton down in double A. Larry Murray in triple A. Dennis Worth, triple A. Scott Laux in single A. Chris Borjos in double A. And Lee Graham in A ball. Uh, really don't recognize any of those names. Uh, Erickson, maybe. I don't remember. What's his real life uh, deal? Minnesota and one year with the Yankees. So mostly a journeyman. He actually had a pretty solid rookie year. And then was just never. That uh, could be because he was playing with Minnesota. Because, I mean, his ERA wasn't horrible in there. 
Uh, you know, he had the one really bad year, and then he got into the fours and could never get out of it. And I guess that's what ended his career. Looks like he had pretty decent stuff. Uh, taking a look at the rotation, we've got 38-year-old uh, knuckleballer Phil Necro, Tommy John, 34 years old. Of course, uh, he's most popular uh, for being uh, the namesake of Tommy John's surgery. And if you remember our very first video in this Let's Play, he was the big free agent that year coming off of the surgery and did very well. Uh, Rudy May, 32 years old, Doc Medic, 28, and young Roger Erickson that we just talked about, 6 and 1, 255 ERA. Sparky Lyles, 32, Tippy Martinez, 27. He uh, was with Baltimore for a long time. Dick Tidro, uh, 30 years old. Larry Gura, 29. Scott McGregor, another Baltimore guy, I believe, 23. And Pat Dobson. Boy, that name's... I know him. Who did he play for? I'm thinking. I have not looked. It's. The, I think he played for the White Sox. Nope. Detroit, San Diego, Baltimore... Cleveland, maybe? Cleveland, maybe? Oh, well. Uh, so that's uh, their rotation. Quite a few older guys in there. Uh, in the batting order, Davey Lopes, 32. Of course, they traded for him uh, last couple of seasons ago um, with uh, the Dodgers. Thurman Munson, catcher extraordinaire. Um... It was 1979 that he uh, that his life ended um, tragically in a plane crash. Um, I, I still remember that, <laughs> seeing that on the news. Uh, so it'll be it'll be really you know that's one of the things that I really like about this game. Uh, you know you cannot bring these guys back and 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 whatnot, but. You know, when we get to 1979 and we get past that date and he's still alive and, and playing baseball in our fake world, um, you know, it just kind of makes you feel good a little bit, you know. Um, you know, it's 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 tough, you know, to see these guys that, you know, were such great players or, you know, anybody, anybody, you know. Um, I was just at a funeral last week for uh, one of my uncles and, you know, he was only 67, and, you know, some of you guys may go, wow, 67, that's old, and, you know, I can relate, because, you know, when I was young, you know, it was, you know, I don't want to live to see 20, because that's, that's old, and then I got to be 19, 20, and I said, okay, well, 30, that's ancient, you know, I don't want to be 30, and then, you know, 30 became 40, and 40 became 50, and I, I turned 50 earlier this month, and, uh, you know, now I've got three kids and, you know, I'm, I eventually, uh, hopefully we'll have grandkids and, uh, you know, then, you know, you have your uncle pass away from a, a heart attack at, uh, you know, 60, 67 years old, just not very old at all. Um, you know, just out of the blue and, uh, you know, it just doesn't make sense sometimes, uh, but, uh, you know, Thurm, you know, since we're talking baseball, certainly not to get somber, and I apologize for that. But, uh, you know, I, I certainly remember, uh, you know, seeing on the news, uh, you know, that Thurman had uh, died in the plane crash. Uh, I believe he was piloting the plane. Uh, he may have just been a passenger, but I believe he might have been actually the pilot uh, and crashed and, uh, you know, ended his life. And, you know, certainly a uh, Hall of Fame worthy player. Uh, and definitely cut short uh, in his prime. Uh, Bobby Bonds, of course, the father of Barry Bonds, uh, doing well. Greg Nettles, 32. Sweet Lou Pinella, 33. You guys, if you're younger, you might just remember him as a, a manager of uh, several teams. Seattle. Um, who else did he manage? I'm drawing a blank right now. I remember him with Seattle. Uh, Detroit, maybe? Maybe not. Uh, Toby Hara, 28. I remember we looked at him for a trade. Chris Chambliss, 
I think we looked at him for a trade too. And Jerry Morales. Uh, so they are 34 and 24, three games up on Baltimore, doing pretty well. Greg Nettles leads the team with 12 homers, uh, seven wins for Phil Necro. Tied for second in runs scored, first in homers, fourth in runs against. The best bullpen in baseball. 12 saves and a zero ERA for Sparky Lyle. Wow, look at that. So if I'm looking at these ratings right and the way he's pitching, movement is important, control is important, stuff is possibly the least important. But this, too, he doesn't have very much velocity, only 80 to 83 miles an hour. But he's an extreme ground ball pitcher, so he's down in the zone. Uh, and I think your home runs per nine bears that out. Um, shoot, last year, just a 0 0.1 gave up one homer on the entire season. So uh, that's always good. So... You know, those are some of the things to look at when you're looking at players. All right, well, let's get back to it. We uh, have fallen off the pace. We have readjusted our batting order. We have brought up, uh, sent down a pitcher. And, uh, boy, we really need to catch fire here. So, doesn't look like we did it. Five and five this week. <laughs> Candelaria with the Expos. Joe Ferguson, an unhappy catcher. Rick Roden. Keith Hernandez, a 25-game hit streak. Lenny Randall of the Cubs gets to 20. And Hernandez's hit streak ends as quick as it starts. Over in the American League voting, Munson... Thompson, Dreesen's still down in third place there. Bobby Gritch has been passed up by George Orta at second base. Brett still holding on at third. Uh, Robin Yount just over Rick Burleson, uh, extending that lead just a little bit, it looks like. Steve Kemp, Fred Lynn, Reggie Jackson. Vita Blue, Ron Guidry's moved up to number two. Dennis is still at number four. Sparky Lyle is still the top vote getter for the Yankees. Over in the National League, it's still Johnny Bench, Garvey, Morgan, Schmidt, Conception, Foster, Sedeno, Parker. Doesn't look like anything's changed there. Tom Seaver, Ron Reed, Tom Underwood. Looks like pretty, pretty status quo over in the National League. Wilbur Wood continues to win. Lynn Randall's streak ends at 20. AL Player of the Week, Rick Peters, 21 years old. NL Player of the Week, Bob Boone, the catcher. S update on stats. Uh, pitching leaders in wins. Well, Matt Keough of Oakland and Dutch Leonard of our team, as well as Paul Splitorf and Wilbur Wood, all with 10 wins. Fight of Blue now with the Red Sox with nine. How old is Vita? He's only 27. Boy, boy. I wonder... I wonder if we could get him. The only guy they would want would be George Brett. Um... I'd give you him and him. I'd give you him. And they still want Brett. Well, so that is not going to happen. All right, well, that's fine. Team power rankings, White Sox stay at the top. We actually climb back up to fourth, so that's good. Athletics make a deal this week 
Sal Bando, 33-year-old third baseman, uh, goes to Boston. And 28-year-old catcher Sam Ewing, hitting 345 this year, goes to Oakland. So, rare trade. Uh, we had that drop off in attendance. A five eight to five loss. Split Orf got hooked. Brett his ninth homer. Six to one win. Leonard six hits, one run. Suter two hits and no runs in two innings. Oh, you know what? While I'm thinking about it, yeah, he's listed as a stopper. I want him as closer. Thank you. McRae, his third home run of the season. Excuse me. 7-2 to win. Gidry gets to 8-2. and two. Suter picks up his 11th save finally. Dreesen, two homers in this game. So he rebounds, getting back to the top of the order, giving him 14 on the season. Bird gets his sixth win. Busby with a pretty good outing. Herbowski as well. Lacey his fifth homer in the win over the Brewers. A 4-0 shutout. Leonard takes the hook on that one. Uh, Bibby with a really good outing for the Brewers. And then we get a 9-4 victory. Splitorf records his 10th win. And no homers in that one, but that's okay. So doing pretty well there. Uh, let's see. No current injuries. Those are all minor league guys on the DL. I'm going to go ahead and bump him up. That was a right fielder. All right, so 14 homers for Dreesen. Brett's hitting 354. Four and a half games back. Let's take a look at the expanded standings here for a minute. 38 and 25. So we're only one game off, but so are the White Sox. They've got a plus 98 run differential. We've got a plus 58. 17 and 16 at home. 2 and 7 in extra innings. 6 and 9 in one run games. That's that's what's killing us if we don't dominate we can't win the close ones that's that's troubling all right another week Doug Bird tendinitis three weeks so let's go ahead and put him on the DL and I want to bring up Larkin how is uh, the one and one with a 220 ERA? All right. So probably going to put Busby in there now, if I had to guess. Set him back to closer. Yes, Busby's in there. All right. And that puts Larkin in uh, to the mix in the bullpen. All right, let's go ahead and finish out the week. All righty. Rotator cuff tendonitis. I, I, I have, I came down with shoulder tendonitis uh, in my shoulder joint. 
um, in both shoulders here in the last two years and it's painful uh, yeah I could definitely see not wanting to throw the ball Ken Forsh out for over a year 30 years old torn flexor tendon in his elbow ouch Keith Hernandez suspended for four games uh, throwing his helmet Oh, threw his helmet towards home plate, towards the umpire. Ouch. Carl Yastrzemski, five hits against the Yankees. Joe Rudy, player of the week in the AL. Gary Matthews, player of the week in the National League. And that's Gary Matthews Sr. His son just came up not too long ago. Uh, you know, when I say that now, I don't follow baseball as close as I used to. Could have been, you know, could have been five, six years ago, maybe, for his son. There's our leaders in slugging percentage. Bunch of who's who on the hitting uh, parade. Houston has come up to the top of the boards. White Sox have slipped down to third. And we really fell off back down to eighth. So the lowest we've been in a while, in a while. Ouch. So a sweep to Baltimore, and then we actually took two out of three to the White Sox. So that was that was something we really needed badly. Baltimore drubbed us. Gidry and McClure got shelled. I think McClure's about done. Bird, he got hurt in that one, and then we went through the uh, <laughs> the litany of relievers there. Plus, it went 14 innings. Gee whiz. We got five in the seventh. That was all five of our runs, but home run for Lee May, our backup first baseman, in the seventh inning. So, Dreesen did not come out of the game. Okay, Lee May came in for a pinch hit. Aaron, 0 for 1. Still hitting 500, though. 4 to 3 loss. Leonard, no decision. Littell. Then we got a 5 2 win. Split off a complete game. And then a 5-1 win. Gidry got to his ninth win, 9-3. and three. Brett with his 10th homer of the season. And then we got shut out 4 nothing. Busby took the loss there. McClure, solid inning. That helps. Wilson's hitting 250 in the early start. Five weeks with a concussion. Ow. Come on, Mallory. So he goes to the DL. Mallory was a center fielder. So that's going to be All right, Charles Smith can actually play there. So we'll have to call him up. John Milner, man, he is struggling a buck 93. Really? Batting stats, batting splits, April 273, 141, 143. His morale is at his performance. You know what? 
while we're making this tweak here um wow where I'm gonna put Aaron up here and I want him playing every fourth game now is he hitting splits two for four five for ten so he's hitting against everybody <laughs> he's hitting against everybody all right well we'll just put him in against righties for right now all right let's go ahead and finish out the week all right there we go all right a concussion Frank Tanana of the Angels shuts us out. Gary Templeton, a five-hit game for the Cardinals. Jerry Remy of the Angels with five hits against the Twins. AL Player of the Week, Jeff Burrows. I remember his son uh, playing in the Little League World Series. <laughs> Billy Sample, 22 years old, Player of the Week for the NL. White Sox climb back up to number one. Royals, we're outside the top ten. Ow, and the Astros drop down to number five. Single season records for innings pitched. Will White, 680 innings. Old Hoss Radburn, 678 Guy Heckler 670 Jim McCormick 657 and Pud Galvin the great Pudster 656 notice all these guys were back uh, before the turn of last century the 1880s in that era now while we don't know re remember any of those names uh, we do remember some of the old timers, you know, from the 1900s, you know, Cy Young, and they threw a lot of innings too. Even in the 70s, it was not uncommon for pitchers to pitch complete games. Uh, that was basically the expectation to finish what you started. In fact, I, I want to say I heard a story about Dennis Eckersley, who went on to become arguably the greatest relief pitcher. Uh, in the history of the game and he started his career as a starter and when they asked him to go into the bullpen he did not want to because he felt he would never play again because starters jobs were to finish the game and the only time a reliever would come in is if there was a rain delay and you were unable to come back uh, and get warm again uh, or if it was potentially an extra inning game which those are not all that frequent. Um, or if there was an injury, those were really the only times you were expected to use a relief pitcher. So he did not want to do that. And of course, that was a transition period uh, from a complete game starter or even a seven, eight, nine inning starter to a five or six inning starter and we started seeing the bullpens come into existence. Um, nowadays, you know, I mean, you, we've seen guys like uh, Steven Strasburg put on uh, inning counts, uh, you know, so many innings. And uh, we'll never see these kind of numbers again. But to, to, say, that, to say that pitchers can't throw... It's because they don't train to throw that way. Um, you know, Nolan Ryan used to talk about, you know, he would pitch his day and then he would go out the day after he pitched and he would actually still throw, not hard, but he would go out and, you know, throw, you know, 50 or 60 pitches just to keep, you know, get his arm loose. And then he would rest for a day or two, you know, with very, very light throwing, playing catch or pepper or something and then work his way back up. And then, you know, the day before the game, 
he was throwing again with velocity and you know then he would pitch his you know and this was when you had four man rotations too so you know seeing guys go 300 innings was it was not uncommon uh you know we just don't see that anymore um and, and it's a lot of it has to do they say with you know basically how the guys train these days but even more so you know i i heard an interesting uh conversation on sports radio yesterday uh and they were talking about the injuries and you know when when i played growing up you know you played baseball in your local little league team and then you went you played football you played soccer you played basketball you know you played year round but you played three four five different sports uh and now it's gotten to be that at, you know it, at at seven years old you're on a traveling baseball team playing year round and that's all you do and and you put more wear on your arm by doing that because you know the throwing motion for a baseball and a football completely different and then you play soccer or basketball and you're not really even using your arms um, you know so your arm gets some rest well now that you're playing and you're focusing year-round and training year-round uh, you know it's just that repetitive motion you're putting many more years of wear on your arm in a shorter period of time you know whereas the guys when I you know when when I was younger guys like Nolan Ryan you know now you've got kids in grade school and high school that are pitching more in one year than Ryan would pitch in three or four seasons um, so is it any wonder even with better nutrition better training better health uh, bigger and better athletes that we're seeing more injuries so that was kind of interesting to think about that you know we, we're into this time of high technology and uh, you know and then the training and, and advancements in our athletes but yet we see you know while they're getting bigger and stronger and faster they're also becoming more fragile it seems and and a lot of that comes back to this repetitiveness they say so you know uh, I think it's kind of like technology you know you get so much and then you can't live without it <laughs> so anyway guys uh, kind of a diatribe there at the end but uh, anyway thanks for checking out the video uh, hopefully we can get these guys turned around or at least make it into the postseason and we'll see you later bye